find your light. Good light makes all the difference to your enjoyment and transforms how well one can see. My favourite time for stitching is in the evening, more in the winter with dark nights, so a light well positioned to your stitching chair avoids mistakes and makes the whole experience more pleasurable. Better still is a magnifier with a built-in light. Take one with a magnifying glass large enough not to have to move it around to see your whole design. Watch for sunlight, frequently one stitches close to a window and so always, always cover your lamp up when not in use. Tip number eight, cut your canvas generously. When starting out on a new design, be aware that while working your piece, a beautiful border might tempt you. Truly sad if there's not enough canvas to work it. Rule of thumb I go by, for most items allow two inches on either side. For upholstered pieces, I allow three inches. But a further tip, check any upholstered pieces. They might need extra stuffing before the needlepoint canvas is fixed. Allow sufficient canvas for this. Tip number nine, mark the centre accurately. It sounds obvious, but eyeballing the centre is not enough. I only know too well. I did not measure the centre accurately, and so you can see that the board of this side is much smaller than that one. Whereas this lower, the second attempt I did, they're equal borders on all four sides. Not taking a moment to get the tape measure and measure accurately, the piece can finish up far too close to the edge, or even worse scenario, not being able to complete the border at some of the sides. Uh, I've marked the centre here, and then I, each of the sides I've also marked, which helps if you're planning a border of any sort. Use an HB pencil or a tacking thread. Um, a diagonal line tacked in also can be enormously helpful. Taking two minutes now will save future disappointment. Tip number 10, start and finish threads generously. Place a knot on the right side of your work in the direction of the stitching. My favorite start is a waist knot in the direction of the work as the stitching covers the back of the stitches. The distance of the waist knot should be placed from the start of the stitches depends on both the thread and the stitches to be worked. As this is wool and I'm working towards the knot, uh, the, the distance was quite short. With a lacy thread I would put my knot a little further away. Lacy stitches in silk or a delicate thread require a longer distance. Finishing, take the thread to the back of the work and weave horizontally or vertically, never diagonally, through the back of stitches. Nothing is as annoying as a thread popping out of a finished piece. Tip number 11, don't start anything without a good finisher in mind. I started off by listing my 10 top tips, but this one, an additional bonus, is most probably the most important of the whole lot. I never offer a new design without knowing someone to recommend for its making up. I always want the models of new design to be attractive and inspirational, but also to get your pieces looking the best possible. The price I'm charged is also crucial. Expect to pay a fair price for an excellent job, but not outrageous. 
Students have returned pieces to me for finishing. We've had canvases back from the States and Europe. Remember that good finishing for anything will do justice to your piece as a further investment of your time.